Hello again. Um, this is how to make uh, an electric boat from a uh, uh, drinks cola bottle. First thing you're going to do is remove a section of the drinks bottle. Um, now I'm not claiming this is easy. Uh, you do need really to have um, scissors with a sharp point. So um, I'll leave it to you as professionals to judge whether uh, pupils will be able to do that. Your pupils will be able to do this. Um, what you have to do is, if you look carefully on the bottom, you will see a seam line on each side. So you can follow that when you're cutting it out. Um, by far the easiest way to do this is to use a soldering iron to make some pilot holes. Um, if you're going to do one, I don't think there's any particular uh, health hazard with the fumes. They're fairly minimal. If you're going to be doing a lot, then I'd do it in a well-ventilated room. So I've made um, two holes along that seam line. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I can see it, you might not just be able to see the seam line. And there's another seam line on the other side. So we'll just make two more holes. Don't worry if it's not perfectly symmetrical. There we go. So now that makes it much easier to get the um, scissors in. And I'm going to cut along that seam line. And along the other side. And then I'm going to cut straight over the top and the same at the bottom of the bottle. This is going to be the, the back of the boat, the stern of the boat. I'll remove that section. Uh, I never throw things away, that's a useful shape. Might be able to make a windmill out of that. Um, next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to uh, use a propeller and it's going to be on the end of a, a shaft. Uh, this is a two millimeter uh, welding rod, it's steel rod with a copper coating. Um, it's going to be a tight fit but I want it to be, I want to be able to hammer this in with a hammer. Get a really firm joint, that, that's probably never going to come off, that's really on firmly. Now the prop shaft is going to go through the hull of the boat, so we've got to make a, heart, um, a hole. Um, and the hole needs to be uh, in the middle of the uh, uh, bottom of the hull, would it be the keel I suppose. And um, approximately about 10 or 11 centimetres from the back of the boat. So um, we're going to make a hole, uh, let me see in the middle it's going to be round about round about there. Now again we could use a craft knife or scissors to make a hole but it's far easier to use a soldering iron. So I'm just going to carefully make a a hole in the boat there. But we actually want it to be more of a slot so I'm going to angle the soldering iron and just use the heat to heat um, a slot there. Don't make it too big. Next thing we're going to do is to uh, prepare the prop shaft. It's going to run inside um, a thin 3mm plastic drinking straw. That's going to spin in the straw like this. And then we're going to support it on a uh, triangle of 3mm uh, corex. That's going to be supported like that to get the angle to pass it through. So I'm going to um, glue that on now with some uh, with a glue gun. Glue gun glue is waterproof. And when you glue the straw on, make sure you've got plenty of straw sticking out at both ends and make sure that you uh, stick it along, uh, is that called the hypotenuse for my school maths? So it's a right angle triangle and stick it along the, the longest side and make sure it's straight. Now we only want it to be sticking out um, a bit at this end. That's probably enough. We can trim this, trim that off later. That's going to pass down through the hull and be mounted up like that. And I'm going to glue this triangle down to the bottom of the boat, checking that it's um, checking that it's straight. And again, make sure that you don't bend the straw. That's looking good. So I'll put some glue on there. 
just putting some glue along the bottom of the Kyx triangle. There we go, pass it through the hole and stick it down, check from the top, make sure it's straight. I can always put some more glue on afterwards. That's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Now, um, if I look at the hole, I've got we're going to uh, got some leaks here. Water's going to get in there, so I'm going to seal up any gaps left with uh, some hot glue. Just work it round, all the way around the straw like that. There we go, let's seal it. It doesn't really matter if there's a very, very small leak. So that's our propeller mounted. Um, our, our propeller shaft, rather. That's going to go in there. We've got a bit too much straw there. I can cut that back. I don't want the propeller to rub on the underside of the hull. I think I can go a little bit more. There we go. So now can you see we've got the propeller spinning around in its, uh, in its shaft and I've got enough metal rod sticking out the other end um, to connect it to a motor. I'm going to use uh, our standard cheap electric motor. Um, I've got some wires already soldered onto it. And um, connecting it, uh, we really need um, a flexible joint, a flexible connection. And uh, the, what I use is um, the insulation um, from the wires inside a bit of mains cable. This is, uh, I think it's 10 amp mains cable. I'm just going to strip off a piece of that insulation with some automatic wire strippers and I can use that piece of insulation as a, a flexible connector. I'm going to push it on the motor. There we are. I hope you can see that that fits really, really well onto the uh, motor. Um, having opened that end up, I'm now going to use that end to fix it onto the prop shaft. It's a little bit fiddly. With hindsight perhaps I should have fitted it on before I put the prop shaft in. Now that's going on. It's worth taking a bit of care to get it on really firmly. You only really want to put it on once. There we are, that's fitted. And now I should be able to get the the motor to go on the other end. I think I can make that a little bit shorter and push the motor shaft onto the other end. There we are, that's connected. Uh, we now need to make a platform for the motor to sit on. Uh, I've got a piece of uh, 3 millimeter Corex here and I've scored it so that it's got two flaps so that I can glue that in. I think it probably goes the other way around. No, I think I was right the first time. Let's glue it in that way. And that will create a, a platform for our motor to sit on. I think I've made that um, a little bit too short. I'm going to make a, a, a longer piece. Uh, got some Corex here. and just um, fold some strips over the end. There we go. I think that will probably be a better fit now. Yes it is, that's better. So I'm going to put some glue on these two surfaces and glue that motor platform in. Go. I'm working very quickly here for this video. I'd, if I was, uh, I was, I would take more time if I was making one. And then I'm going to put a big blob of glue on the platform to glue the motor down. You could use a motor 
a, a, um, a plastic motor clip. There we are. That's the motor glued into position. And we'll just check it, make sure the propeller's working. Um, we could run it off of two batteries, that will make a rather fast boat. I'm just going to run it off of one battery. And just to see if it's working, I'm just going to hold the wires together. Ah, oh, yes, I can see the propeller going round. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, now, looking back at the propeller, we want it to go um, anti-clockwise to make the boat go forwards. Oh, that's the wrong way round, so I'm going to swap the wires round. And now it's going in the right direction. So, having worked out which way it's going, I can now join two of those wires together permanently. I'm going to twist them together. And we're almost finished really. Um, I'm going to make a platform to mount the uh, battery holder on. Um, I think we just need two strips of Corex on each side. When you cut with the, with the flutes of Corex it's very easy to cut. It's very safe as well because the craft knife follows the flutes. I don't think we need quite that length. There we are, and I'm going to glue those um, to each side of the hull. I think now I've got to think about weight distribution. I think we'll have it about there. We can always adjust the, um, the way the boat floats with bits of plasticine as ballast. There we are. I've glued these two bits of Corex to each side there, and now I can put a platform going across there. I think we'll use a piece of Corex here. I think it needs to be about that wide. And we'll just measure the uh, width of it. it. Needs to be approximately that wide. Let's make a slightly better mark so I can see it. And we'll cut that piece off. Should use a safety ruler and a cut and a safety cutting mat when cutting with a craft knife. And now I'm going to glue that piece down. And once you've got this uh, deck in, it makes the whole boat much stronger. And there we are, that's on. So now we can glue the uh, battery holder down. Um, now for a switch, I'm going to we could use a bought switch. We could make a switch out of paper fasteners or paper clips. Um, I'm just going to use a bought switch here. Um, just bend it a bit tighter so it fits in. There we are. And the other wire goes in the hole on the other side. And we glue that switch down. Okay, and check that that's working. Yep, that's fine. And the last thing we're going to do uh, is to make a, a rudder system to steer your boat. Otherwise, when you set it off in a lake, it will just, it'll just go disappear into the distance. Um, I've got two pieces of 4mm Corex here. Um, this uh, longer piece I'm going to glue to the back of the uh, boat, to the stern of the boat. Put some glue on here. Doesn't need to be much. There we are. So we glue that on there. And then I'm going to use um, a piece of dowel, push it into the uh, rudder here, and then push the rudder shaft into the bottom of that piece of Corex. Very simple uh, rudder system here. Because it's tight, it will actually stay in the position that you set it. Um, so obviously a bit of uh, tidying up of the wires but uh, that basically is my uh, electric coke bottle uh, boat. I hope you enjoy making it.